abbastanza per di qua comunque vada sempre sulla mia strada Today we have a very exciting day planned. What are we doing today? We're going on a Vespa tour of Roma. That's right, we're taking scooters all around the city to go see all the cool sights. And it looks a little cloudy, but that should be good because it's been 90 degrees every single day that we've been here. So you basically have to take a siesta in the afternoon. But this should be like 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So super excited to ride Vespas around Roma. in Roma! So we are at an awesome tour, the most authentic way to see Rome on Vespas. Beep, beep. Give them a hug. Give the people a hug. I'm afraid our driver will be confused. <laughs> our guy won't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we are doing the panoramic tour, which takes us around all the sites in Rome. And let's say that there are a ton of sites in Rome to see. So I have a feeling we're just gonna scratch the surface today. But what a fun way to get out and see the city. All right, I'm about to drink from one of the famous Roman fountains. They are all over the city. I'm gonna show you the proper way to drink. It's not just filling your bottle up like this, although you can do that. So that water that's coming from the fountain is safe to drink. So when you come to Rome, buy one bottle of water and then you can fill it up as you walk around the streets. So yes, perfectly safe. It's coming all from natural springs all across the town. That was so cool. So our tour guide, Alexander, took us all around Rome. There he is. Bye-bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. So the Vespa tour was awesome because we got to see the entire city and we got to pick where we went and learn about the history of the city and really, I mean, there's so much history here that you really just scratch the surface, but it was wonderful to get an overview of things and learn about the thousands of years, and I mean like 3,000 years of history right here in the eternal city of Rome. I absolutely loved it because I hate, hate the long, slow walking, what our tour guide gave us the name, zombie tours. Those are the ones that just kill you. This was great because we would stop for like five, 10 minutes. He would tell us some history. We'd get to explore it on our own. And then we'd be right back on the Vespa, wind in our hair, in the Italian Roman traffic. One warning of caution, if you are not comfortable driving a Vespa, I may say to stay away from this. I think you can actually ride with the guides if you want to, but we decided to do it because we like to live dangerously. Scott was my chariot today, and we got to see where they used to race the ancient chariots back in the day. So that was pretty fun. Yeah. I think it's time for gelato. Yes, always. Hi, Vespa. I loved you. Gotcha. Cheers. Nine. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, got, I see we're mint twins. I got Oreo and mint. I got Oreo, oh no. <laughs> you got Oreo. I got mint and cookies. <laughs> How many times have we had gelato this trip? I would say two a day, most likely, for five days. So, yeah, 10 to 11, probably. <laughs> In full seriousness. <laughs> So tonight we have ventured out away from the masses. Well, actually, we came back to the masses. We're on the other side of the river. This is more where the locals live. And we came to Tonorello, where it's early for Italian time to eat, and it is already crowded. We already had to wait about half an hour for a table, but very, very excited. This place looks fantastic. All the other restaurants around, just a few people sitting here and there. This place is a local favorite. This is where everyone comes to eat. And uh, how are you feeling about it? Good. Yes. Okay, so you guys know that we love the city of Florence, and when we're in Florence, we always go to the Altarno, the other side of the river. Oh my God, I've dreamt about this moment for like two years. <laughs> People will write songs about this pizza. It's so good. Now Trastevere, where we are right now, is similar to the Ultrano in that it's where the locals go, it's on the other side of the river from the main hub of the city in Rome, and it's a little more gritty, it's hip, I like the vibes here, and I'm ready to manja. So we just finished our delicious meal at Tonarello on the other side of the river. I would say that Trastevere is a must. You have to escape the touristic sites of Rome and cross the Tiber River over to Trastevere. There's tons of really cute restaurants. You can sit outside, have some great cheap table wine. And if you come to Tonarello, we highly recommend the meatballs. They were so good. Yes, delicious. Oxo meatballs. Now, one of the best things about Rome is after a big meal, you can go walk it off. So we've probably got like a mile. Oh my, that was a lot of glass that just broke my bones. But yeah, we're gonna go walk off this big meal. Just not in that glass right there. Wow, that was a bummer. going to end our time in Rome, how we've spent most of our time in Rome, and that is eating. And we are going to be eating pizza at a very famous place that was recommended by the late, great, who? Anthony Bourdain. Pizzaria Bonchi's place is a departure from the classics. I'm starting early with a little snack. <laughs> yes, this was recommended on Anthony Bourdain's TV show, and he was hesitant to recommend it because they actually put pineapple on the piece, some of the pizzas, but after tasting it, he was sold on the whole concept. That should not have been good. That absolutely, that should not have been good. It was really, really good. So, I'm excited. Let's get going. This place looks great. I mean, it's very gritty, it's very grimy, but uh, looks like the locals come here. And it is away from the center of Rome. It took about 17 minutes to scooter over here. And I like that there is not a big crowd. <laughs> so nice in August in Rome. Yeah, so we took a scooter. That is uh, our number one recommendation. If you're just a couple or by yourself, I know they're controversial, but if you're trying to get around Rome, and you need to save some time, those things are amazing to just scoot. So we did that, it took us 15 minutes versus an hour walk from down where we're staying. Mm -hmm. But uh, now we're here, pizza's cooking, 
It's all in displays. They have every different type. So, do you remember what we got? Okay, well, I also wanted to mention that the pizzas, they cut them with a scissor to get you a slice of pizza, which I think is just so fun. Yeah. So, we got sausage and a vegetable pizza. I think it's sausage and broccoli rob. And then we got a tomato and cheese, just, you know. I would say a typical pizza, but here it looks like anything but typical. And then the third one we got was the first one we ordered. Which was like a Parmesan, basically it was like an eggplant parm as a pizza. Yes, I love that one. I love eggplant parm. Mm. Okay. Okay, so they brought out the pizzas. Look at this. Doesn't it look so good? So we got, start out with like basically a broccoli rob with sausage, eggplant parm, and then very simply just cherry tomatoes and mozzarella. Mm. Simple, delicious. Which one do you start with? I'm gonna start with the yeah. classic. This is different type of pizza. This is not marinara, cheese, basil. This is different. It's, it's an alternative. Plastic. It's eclectic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Love that because the tomatoes. That's what you expect when you have it. When you're having pizza. Love the sausage and the eggplant farm. Interesting twist. Mm -hmm. Crust is great. Bread is great. Cool place to come visit. I bet if you came here more frequently, you would figure out like your favorites. I kind of want to try some more. I do too. I bet you they cycle a lot of different ones. Yeah. Back to this guy. Yeah, that one's the best.